Hi everyone, it's Maya. And Grace here, and in this podcast today we will be talking about ecological succession. Ecological communities are all the populations found in an area at a defined time, and the succession sequence is the changes in the community over time. Ecological succession can be a good thing sometimes, or sometimes it can be a bad thing, but most of the time it's really great for the environment. Ecological succession can happen fast as in a few days, or it can happen over a few years. Really, it depends on the environment you're in and the situation you are dealing with. Natural replacement will occur in a community until a stable stage is reached. Reach. This can be primary or secondary succession. These changes may occur for reasons such as new resources, disturbances, and biological changes in the environment. A small example of this would be your garden. It begins with only a patch of grass and, and some seeds, and in a few weeks, flowers and plants begin to grow. This happens on a much bigger scale as well. A bigger or longer span would be like seasons changing in a park. You start with the trees in the summer, which are full of leaves, flowers, and everything. Then, over a span of a few months, the trees begin to change color and their leaves begin to fall off. These flowers will also start to disappear, and this will be the start of the change. And on the other hand, a large-scale ecological succession is when environment begins to grow from the ground up. This happens with either primary or secondary succession. Shall we begin with secondary succession? We shall. In the first picture, at year one, you can see that the forest is completely healthy and full. This means the forest has tons of resources, tons of animals. However, somewhere deep in the forest, the forest is not very healthy. It needs to be replaced and somehow. So after years and years of growing in the forest, it eventually builds up a lot more brush, grass, and trees, which are now dead and unneeded in the forest environment, which provide very good fuel for forest fires to thrive. However, with so much of this growth and buildup, the forest is eventually going to change in some way, and most often it is a forest fire. However, though, these forest fires aren't, aren't always bad things, which most people think they are. Some animals and plants actually depend on forest fires, for um, new vegetation to bring in new resources for them to be able to live better and more efficient life. These forest fires allow for the dead and unneeded resources to be removed from the area and allow for fresh resources to start to begin to grow and develop a stronger and new ecosystem. So once living trees disperse their nutrients and organic material back into the ground after a fire, this aids the regrowth of an environment and allows ecological succession to start to take place. And this is just the beginning of a process. As you can see, and at year six, the forest fire just begins to start to grow a little, a little life after a natural disaster. Although there isn't much life after six years, the habitat is slowly and al allowing to a rebuild of new organisms and plants to eventually come back to life. And as you can see, by year 14, the forest is starting to fully grow back with new plants and new organisms, which is called secondary succession. The reason for this process is because change needs to happen in order for an environment to grow stronger and better. Change may occur for new resources, disturbances, or for biotic changes. Sometimes these changes can take up to a hundred or thousands of years. Some plants have adapted to learn and thrive because of this natural occurrence. Plants have a distinct disadvantage compared to animals in the fact that they can't run, hide, creep, crawl on a fire's path, but they have adapted to survive and even depend on regular fire. Pines are a spectacular example. They have thick cones with serotinus on them. This gluey substance melts after fire occurs, then allows the seed inside the cone to come out and be able to grow in the newly rich in soil. <laughs>
glaciers, and more. These are natural disasters that allow for the redevelopment of an ecosystem that is needed to go through to change and grow stronger. An example of ecological succession would be like the situation that happened in Iceland with the volcano explosion. In 1963, a ship saw smoke across the island and thought a ship was actually sinking. However, a natural disaster was just occurring. As the guys went over to check out what was going on, they realized that a volcano had been building up for years and was actually just erupting and forming a new land formation, which would lead to our next topic. You guessed it, primary succession. This new land formation was actually called Circe. When the volcano exploded, lava raised up from the ocean surface and, became, and started to form new layers. The lava flows became prominent, forming hard caps of solid rock over the lower slopes of the new island. This prevented the waves from washing away the island. So being that there is no life, this actually introduces us to our next topic, like Grace said, primary succession. Primary succession. In primary succession, the area that this is happening to is brand new. At least in the sense that you're usually talking about an area that it doesn't have any soil. So this usually has to be a special circumstance. An example could be a volcano lava flow that now has left this new area with no soil present. And usually you have... Primary succession is the development of a new ecosystem in, area, in an area where there has not been an ecosystem before. For example, lava from the volcano turns into rock and creates a new island. When that island starts developing, organisms like lichen moss and other pioneer plants grow, it attracts organisms. More and more plants grow and organisms can be supported. Then, by then, a new habitat is formed and this is what we call primary succession. So, primary succession is actually a little different than secondary succession. Instead of the regrowth of an environment after a natural disaster is called, has occurred, Primary succession actually forms an environment where there was actually no ecosystem before. The communities forming in an originally lifeless habitat normally have no soil and the process is very slow and nothing being developed at the moment, but after years and years and years, an environment starts to grow. This also occurs where there was no previous community, such as bare rock or sand. However, this land won't stay like this forever. It actually starts to develop what we call pioneer species. So with Circe, the new land had no life before, but with primary succession, it allowed for a very slow process to occur, which small plants started to slowly develop and allow for tiny organisms to start to populate the area. As soon as those small organisms began to populate the land, they allowed for plants and the environment to grow larger and allow for more and new species to develop and help form the ecosystem species that are the first ones to arrive on the land are actually called the pioneer species. Pioneer species are hardy species which are the first ones to colonize previous biodiverse steady state ecosystems. The pioneer species is an organism that can tolerate extreme conditions such as hot, dry, cold, or wet. These species are the first to create life in a lifeless area. They also help to produce soil over hundreds of years and break apart the rocks. As well, these species hold water, which allow for other organisms to grow in an environment that is allowed to flourish. Because pioneer species have to be able to survive in an ecosystem where there was nothing before or is very little now, they have a couple of following characteristics to help them out. They have um, to live in very poor quality soil, so they have long roots that get down deep into the soil where the nutrients are or were. Also, pioneer species have to be wind pollinated because insects are unlikely to be present in a barren area and environment. Um, they also reproduce asexually altogether as an extreme barren conditions present more favorable to repro reproduce asexually rather than sexually. We can note that pioneer species have to be photosynthetic because there is no other source of energy such as other organisms that would be able to provide energy for them to reproduce. Lichens grow on rocks, so they are one of the first light forms that have been able to break down rock into nutrient-rich soil. Pioneer species will eventually die, creating plant litter. Um, and this breaks down into a leaf mold and after some time new soil is formed for secondary succession to occur.
pioneer species, which that's the name for species that will colonize the area first. It sounds kind of exciting. Pioneer species and primary succession. Well, they can be organisms like lichen. <laughs> if you're unsure about what lichen is, you need to Google it. It's likely you've seen lichen before. Moss is another potential pioneer. After pioneer species colonize the area, they slowly break down rock and to smaller, more about the pioneer species is that these plants really need to be hardy to be able to survive the harsh conditions like Maya said previously and um, they have to be able to repopulate easily because a big producer population allows for a larger consumer population. Another thing about these plants is they have to have long roots which are able to hold nitrogen fixing bacteria which allow for an easier time for these plants to grow and repopulate the area as well. These pioneer species are very crucial to the development of an ecosystem, and without them, primary succession actually would never occur. They produce soil over hundreds of years and break apart the rock and add humus as they die and decompose. Without them, no life would start on the area where there was not. A great example of a pioneer species is, as men mentioned previously, lich lichen. Lichen. A simple, slow-growing plant that typically forms a low, crusty, leaf-like or branching growth on rocks, walls, and trees. They can some come in various and bizarre shapes and sizes. No two are the same, just like snowflakes. Lichen. Complex organisms, and though you might think they are plants, actually they are two separate. There is two separate parts. They are part fungus and part algae. The dominant part is the fungus, which gives the lichen like it. of its characteristics. They're, these are very important to the primate succession um, sequence and the formation of the new ecosystem. Like Grace said, algae and fungi are actually growing together in a mutualistic relationship. The algae make its own food and provide for the fungi, while the fungi break down the organisms and, organisms and break down material that makes soil for the new land and area. Normally, these are the first two organisms to appear on land because they work together in a mutualistic way and can help depend on each other forming a new ecosystem. The reason lich like it. is easy to grow on new areas is because they do not need other life or do not need soil to grow. As well as algae, they photosynthesize and the fungi absorb nutrients from rocks and holds water which then break down the rock. When this does happen, there are ways that the lich like it. does spread naturally like when rocks break apart. The lichen like when rocks break apart and then a glacier when the lichen dies they accumulate in those cracks and then as the water starts to thaw the lichen grows again and spreads everywhere. As you can see in the picture to the side, pioneer species aren't the only things that actually go into the formation of a new land or ecosystem. There's actually a lot more that go into it. As you can see, it starts with pioneer species but then it moves to intermediate species. Not only do the lichen help nourish and populate the land, mosses and ferns are begin to grow and die as well, and uh, they lead to the creation of nutrient-rich soil. This soil provides for a great ecosystem and environment that will allow for tons of plants to grow. As well with that, the plants will die and add organic matter and help form a soil layer that thickens and grows thicker and thicker as the time goes on. This leads to the development of new growth and weeds and wildflowers will also begin to grow. And the next species after pioneer species would be the intermediate species. The intermediate species is similar to shrubs and small trees that start to form after lichens, lichens. This allows for smaller animal life to start to find homes and more of an environment to develop. After this intermediate species starts to form, <laughs> a plant mat will form which is composed of more adult plants like shrubs, flowers, and the start of larger trees. Soon, about after about two years, these larger trees will start to form into a stronger ecosystem and allow for stronger species to start to form a home. However, plants aren't the only thing that help repopulate an ecosystem. Animals are an essential part of, to forming a new ecosystem. Once animals start to move into these new areas, they begin to eat plants, spread seeds in other areas, and when they die, they decompose and their nutrients go into the soil, which help make more plants. Once animals and other organisms begin to live and reproduce in that new habitat, it soon becomes stable. After succession occurs and the environment is fully grown and then reaches a climax community. Now, a climax community is when an environment stabilizes in an order set. 
it will still continue to change, but only in small ways. Of course, this is the final stage in ecological succession. That is until after a long time, then another forest fire happens and primary or er, second <laughs> secondary succession starts to grow again. See, very confusing, but mm -hmm. that's yeah. life. Another part to this climax community, though, also involves something called the surreal community, which is actually an intermediate stage found in ecological succession in a community advancing towards its climax community. In many cases, more than one surreal stage actually evolves until climax conditions are attained or reached or where the, cli or where the community is actually happy. The surreal community is the name given to each group of plants within that succession. In many situations, more than one surreal stage actually evolves until the climax communities are reached or at its full stage of potential growth. For example, like the lithosphere dealing with the community of rocks or hydrosphere dealing with water. Like in secondary succession, it can be seen in coniferous forest. During the first two years, the grasses, heaths, and other plants such as firewoods will be fully healthy and ready to blossom and bloom. Then, after a few more years, shrubs will actually start to appear. And after about eight or nine years, this area is likely to be crowded with young trees and young plants ready for full growth and to develop the new environment that is ready to be attained. These stages are referred to as the surreal community or are just what start to grow after the pioneer species. These species will often grow and die and more often or not occur in more than one stages, like I said, unlike other things like forest fires and the other succession. And don't forget about the small things that also help the community, like surreal community, which was mentioned previously. It's a term used for plants that help to repopulate a community after a pioneer species has occurred. And like said in the beginning, pioneer species is the first species to occur on land. The surreal community just helps to repopulate and replenish the pioneer species. Also, don't forget about the edge effect, which are changes in a population or community structures that occur right at the boundary of two or more habitats. Lastly, and finally, there are actually two more successions called autogenic succession and allogenic su succession. Autogenic occurs as a result of biotic factors. The growth of organic matter, such as dead plants or decaying animals, cause for changes to occur in a community. Then, on the other hand, allogenic does not involve plants at all. These are actually the changes that we mentioned in the beginning that we as humans cannot change, like volcanoes flooding, or floodings, or glaciers. But on the other hand, there are some human interferences with the environment that we can. These all actually aid to the growth of a new environment where there wasn't one, or it helps to control or replenish the resources where there was an environment or where there actually was an environment. Either way, ecological succession is so important to our ecosystem and it aids in ways that no one thinks and we actually don't realize most often or not. It can be as simple, like we said, as growing a garden or seasons changing, or it can be as complex as a new ecosystem evolving where there wasn't one before. I think for now our time has run up and we've given us all our knowledge that we have known on ecological succession. We hope that you've learned that ecological su succession comes in two ways, primary and secondary succession. We hope you learned something and that not all natural disasters are bad things. Some can actually be very helpful. Next time you're walking outside or swimming, just take a moment to appreciate all the nature and beauty that is our home, the earth. Quick recap on what we have learned today. The big changes that an environment goes through, what we call is ecological succession. Now there are two main types of ecological succession, primary and secondary. Secondary succession happens after an existing environment goes through a disaster and the environment is rebuilt from the ruins. This is mostly seen after a fire. This is just na nature running its course. It allows the brush and shrubs not to build up, nutrients to be delivered back into the soil, and is essential for some plants like the pine trees to reproduce. Primary succession is when an ecosystem is formed where there has not been one before. For example, the land formed by volcanic eruptions after long periods of time allow for habitats to flourish. The examples, the first and very essential part to primary succession is the pioneer species. Lichens are perfect examples, and once they grow, they begin to attract organisms and intermediate species begin to grow. Once we have these key features, an environment can be maintained for a long time in our climax community. 
Primary succession is not as common as secondary succession because lava-formed islands don't come every day, but we do see quite a lot of forest fires and habitats being reformed over the years. Link, in the, link, description below. link in the description below to listen to Little Dickie's new song. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs>